Hi, I'm Dr. Wendy Wilson, and I'm a featured woman in the March 2024 issue of the Bold Maven magazine. Can you share a little about what you do? Yes, um, I'm an executive coach and a career planning strategist. Uh, the name of my business is W2 Communications, and I help individuals, whether they're entry level all the way to the C-suite, help to identify and then craft who they are as a professional. And what I like to focus on is to help them to establish what I uh, have dubbed their normalizing their executive presence. And those are those three um, sweet spots, if you will, three areas that help them to stand out in their respective fields or their disciplines. When did you know that this was something you wanted to do? Wow, that's a great question. Um, I, I guess it's just been um, something that has just been whispering in my ear probably throughout my entire career. Uh, initially, I started off in human resources and then I transitioned. I have a, over a 20 year career in higher education. And um, I've just noticed that throughout uh, my entire career path and my tra trajectory, that I was always involved with assisting people, with helping them to design what they uh, envision their career would look like. Um, I've uh, helped individuals as far as preparing for job interviews and helping them with resumes. And then um, in my current role as a chief of staff, I'm a vice president at a university and a uh, public um, uh, state institution here in Georgia. Um, I interact with um, individuals from all facets, whether it be from students all the way up again to the C-suite, but uh, just helping them to stay connected, to understand the intricacies of their job and dealing with uh, personnel issues that may arise. And so all of that eventually kind of shaped and fashioned into my executive coaching business. And I've been doing that probably for the last 17 years and just been having an absolute ball. You've worked with clients in a range of industries. Can you share your experience with a few? Yes, um, I'm super proud. Um, many of them are uh, uh, in C-suite spaces. Uh, I take great joy in working with those students who are just recent college graduates or even high school, trying to uh, shape themselves in terms of their, their image, trying to also align their discipline uh, with the craft that they are developing, trying to network and just establish and build a presence within their professional communities. I'm extremely proud of one individual who is uh, now working at J.P. Morgan Chase and two who are now also working um, at the White House. And to say that I was involved in uh, the design of their plan to get into those spaces uh, making those necessary connections, building those portfolios, and again, uh, having that special gravitas, if you will, to enter into those spaces and then to succeed. What do you consider to be some of your biggest accomplishments so far? Wow. Um, you know, um, higher ed has changed significantly. Um, uh, throughout that time, I've uh, built or established and then built my business uh, so those are two uh, pride points. And I mentioned my profession in terms of higher education because I've been able to navigate that um, uh, ever-changing landscape and continue to grow and, and develop uh, network and build relationships. So I'm very, very proud of that. Uh, then, of course, as I mentioned, uh, the success of my business and it continues to grow. And then also just witnessing and observing the impact that I'm having in the design and the development of people's careers. And certainly I'm extremely proud of my two adult children and uh, who they are and how they are just very compassionate individuals and work hard to make a difference in people's lives. My very, uh, very recent uh, uh, point of pride is a book that will be coming out uh, later on this month and it is entitled 101 career planning and executive present strategy. So I'm super excited. So I have two adult children and now my um, uh, non-human baby is my, my book that I'm super excited about. On the topic of your work as vice president and chief of staff at a Georgia university, what led you to enter into higher education? 
Well, actually, um, I uh, relocated uh, my former spouse, my children's father. We uh, transitioned from Aberdeen, Maryland to Albany, Georgia. That was his last duty station. And um, I would joke with, um, with family members and friends to say, I'm finally reached a point where my resume doesn't look like a checkerboard because we would travel so much because of his career. Wouldn't trade uh, anything in the world uh, for those experiences. But when we moved to Albany, Georgia, um, my son was uh, uh, one at the time. And although I had decided or we had decided that I would stay at home for him for two years, he was a little too rambunctious for me. And we decided, OK, we need to put you in a, a more structured uh, environment, academic environment. So uh, put him in um, a daycare setting and I started looking for a job. Again, at that time, my background was in human resources and searched high and low, nothing availed. And I saw a really great opportunity at what was then at the time Darton State College and applied for it. I was responsible for a scholarship that addressed the needs, the academic and social needs of African-American um, men at the time and absolutely fell in love. And since then have grown and um, my career path in higher ed has let me from that point now that I currently reside uh, and serve as a chief of staff to the president there, and then also vice president of university relations. And it has been a very um, uh, fulfilling and very rich experience, uh, just knowing that you have either an indirect or a direct hand in the design and development of one's um, academic career and then helping them to transition into their professional spaces. There are challenges in every industry. What has your experience been like? You're absolutely right. Um, and challenges often are uh, within those industries are often reflective of what is happening in the greater society. Uh, so depending upon what's happening in the economy that will affect what is going on in the specific um, industry. As it relates to higher ed, I've, I've seen the, the ebbs and flows. And I remember back in 2008 when the economy was just really, really shaky and everyone then decided to go back to, uh, to school to earn a degree. And so we saw a huge increase in the number of students that were entering and then certainly graduating uh, throughout the post-secondary education space. Uh, and then as time moved on, then people decided, oh, I think I want to go into uh, the workspace. And uh, you then have to adjust to that, certainly uh, with the recent pandemic um, that none of us saw coming. And we're in many respects still uh, adjusting and recovering from that. Higher education is has certainly um, been, um, I, I don't know, necessarily want to use the word victim, but impacted uh, by, by that as it relates to um, having to then shift and uh, take the modalities to online uh, within a matter of days at many institutions. Um, the institution that I work for was certainly uh, no exception as it relates to that. And then with that lag, uh, students having to deal with this new world and then learn um, in a different space and then shift back to the classroom space. So we're seeing lots of adjustments as it relates uh, to that and still trying to accommodate and address the needs of those students. And then people are just making um, decisions. We're, um, I'm, I'm 57 and so I marvel at the number of entrepreneurs that are uh, um, honing their crafts and, and building their businesses and they're doing that uh, self-taught uh, or seeking those resources that don't require necessarily a post-secondary education. So institutions are having to make some very um, large um, decisions based upon the diverse needs and expectations of learners. And um, you, know, you just, again, have to adjust and be mindful of uh, how the world is changing and how that impacts you and the, the areas that you're responsible for in the post-secondary education space. Looking back, what advice would you give a younger you? Wow. Um, what advice would I give a younger me to probably be uh, patient, much more patient, and to um, enjoy life? Um, it can be very fleeting 
and we're always racing off to whatever the next is that we create in our minds or that someone has created for us to go after. And we miss the moments that we exist in. Uh, so that would be uh, my biggest adv advice probably to, um, and as much as I am very fortunate to have uh, traveled um, uh, into many spaces across the country and uh, internationally to do more of that. Um, and so that would be my, my biggest advice. Final question. Do you have any future endeavors that you're excited about? I absolutely am just over the moon about what is happening in the month of March. It is just really important to me as I've shared throughout this, this wonderful opportunity to engage with my clients and help them to, as I shared earlier, craft and hone their executive presence. And so I thought it was fitting to bring um, possibly new clients and certainly uh, the ones that I am fortunate enough to assist and to serve in what setting. And that setting is going to be in Macon, Georgia, March 22nd through the 24th. And I'm going to host my first Executive Presence Summit. And it's going to be convening uh, leaders and even entry-level professionals from across, across the country. And we're going to have some very candid discussions about where they are uh, in their uh, particular career, how I can help them. And I'm also bringing in some other industry experts to help them fashion what it uh, looks like to have a presence in a role that they enjoy, that they're comfortable with, and that will allow them to excel whatever their career path is. And then of course, my book uh, is out, 101 Career Planning and Executive Presence Strategies, and it can be purchased on Amazon or directly from my website. I'm super excited about that. And it's kind of a soup to nuts, if you will. 101 just really key fundamental strategies with a focus on designing your career path and your plan, all the way to establishing and maintaining one's executive presence. And again, that executive presence is applicable to anyone, whether they are entry level all the way to the C-suite, far beyond just the gravitas and entering a room and commanding a space. It is having healthy emotional intelligence to, uh, it is also being an effective communicator and then having that professional aesthetic that will allow you to stand out and to be recognized and respected uh, as a career professional. To continue this conversation, you can read my story on theboldmaven.com. Make sure to subscribe to the Bold Maven newsletter to gain access to the digital magazine.